All right, welcome back to Fuck Us Talks, the podcast, episode 95. Today on the show, remember those crazy crimes we covered last week at Urban Decay? Turns out no one got charged for him at all. Then after that, we found some rotten girls in Cringe of the Week. We're going to tell you how to avoid them. Then after that, a family is fleeing Florida because Ron DeSantis won't let them sterilize their children. And last but not least, this Japanese guy tranced himself into a border collie and he's passing. All this and more, it's Fuck Us Talks, the podcast, episode 95, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words, but at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Fuck Us Talks, the podcast featuring Richard Bradbury. All right, this week's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Carter Country Meats. Guys, I just saw this tweet the other day. A few weeks ago, while the media focused on the Titanic submarine, the government quietly legalized the sale of lab-grown chicken and meat without any labeling. This happened with very little safety review or public discussion. If you're okay with eating lab meat cultured from cancer cells, then this post isn't for you. That's disturbing. Yeah. That's not what I want to eat, and that's what I'm not going to eat, which is why we partnered with Carter Country Meats. Carter Country Meats is a family-run farm in Wyoming. They have a ton of beef cows. They've done it for four generations. Great family, great people. Uh, I know them personally. They actually raise their cows in a different way than the industry standard, where they actually rotate them through different fields and get them a diverse diet so they're eating all different colored plants all different types of grasses and other little shrubs and stuff that the other companies don't usually do most of the time the companies just grow the cow fat as possible and then butcher them and send them out these are older cows that are butchered properly and that results in up to a 70 percent increase in nutrition compared to the competition so these cows are raised in in the natural way the correct way they're never going to be injected with sketchy hormones or the covid vaccine or anything like that the, the cattle ranchers themselves are very base people who I know personally. And every time that you purchase your beef from them and use code FLECUS, I get a meat kickback. So I'm not getting paid cash. I'm actually getting paid in meat. CarterCountryMeats.com is the website. It's linked in the description. Everyone likes red meat. If you guys want to fill your freezer, so do I. No one wants to eat this Bill Gates GMO crap. Go get some high quality Carter Country Meats today. Links in the description. Let's get into housekeeping. All right. Getting into housekeeping. Hello, Richard. Hey, what's up? We have a great housekeeping. We have three pages of housekeeping today. Okay. Okay. Your favorite. <laughs> uh, first is first, the doppelgangers. We don't really do doppelgangers anymore, but if we did, Richard Rapway kind of looking like Morgan Wallen and shit. Yeah. With glasses? Who put these glasses on him? Are those, do those not have uh, arms? Like, no, it's like a JPEG. Oh, so it's a – oh, that's why. It's yeah. a filter. So that, Without glasses, I don't see it. But with glasses, I see it. But the glasses are fake. There was a time when we copied Morgan Wallen's outfits and we – yeah, there they are. The brown Christmas suit. Yeah. With the cowboy hats. We try to copy Morgan. Yeah. I will say um, if, you're on, if you're going to an event or something with your boys, cheap blowout suits – like coordinated is a great move. Yeah. The suit cost, like, I think we got it at Goodwill or something. Yeah, we got it at a cheap suit Basically. store. Basically. Um, and yeah. It was like 200 bucks. And But the production value you get from that 200 bucks, basically a thousand dollars worth. You of. could do a party trick where you go like this. Hey, watch this. <laughs> Just rip it up the yeah. back. <laughs> You could jump in the pool. Yeah, you can really do anything. It, once you've once you've uh, re- remembered that it's it only needs to last for one use, yeah. possibilities are limitless. You can really do anything. You yeah. can take a drink and like, hey, watch this. Pour it in your pocket. <laughs> You're all wet. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, we basically did that. Yeah. Uh, all right, moving on. LeBron's school. LeBron opened a school to try to help kids learn better, but turns out LeBron don't know anything. Yeah, LeBron's himself is the personal teacher, as we know. <laughs> But no, I mean, just a headline that came out and a story that was pretty funny. Not one eighth grade student at the LeBron James uh, Akron school has passed a state math test in three years. An eighth grade math isn't even that hard. You'd think there'd be one. You think it's like, oh, no one passed calculus. And, you know, I get that a little bit. Eighth grade math. They ain't getting educated. They're barely getting the uh, letters into math at that point. Right. Like, yeah. just knowing algebra is kind of eighth grade, probably. And it kind of makes you wonder. 
what is the ceiling on how much math LeBron James knows? Do you think he knows? <laughs> do you think he knows three times three? Yeah. You think he knows six times seven? That's a toughie. <laughs> That's getting borderline. <laughs> no, but the, the, the school is like a public school um, in Akron that gets like eight point one million dollars uh, from you know society, and then LeBron just kind of tops it off with an extra one point four or something million a mm-hmm. year. Uh, and they put out a statement that was like, oh, yeah, well, you know, these kind of things take time and blah, blah, blah. Resources. Yeah. And we, we just need to get more resources and teach with love. And it's like, it doesn't matter what, how many resources you dump in somewhere if someone's not going to open the book and like yeah. figure it out. How so. an extra million dollars doesn't yeah. make you know the numbers. <laughs> exactly. So it's sad, but uh, he's been doing this since 2018. These numbers are from the last three years. So. Not one person. So once again, the math we're, test. yeah, and once again, we're questioning LeBron's legacy right now. Yeah. We're like, we're like ESPN. Yeah, exactly. All right, moving on. Uh, Diane Feinstein and Mitch McConnell had a tough week last week. Mitch McConnell had that freeze up where he got tapped by that lady, uh, that lizard handler, and turned his brain off. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Diane Feinstein had a similar situation. There was, I guess, a, a vote on the floor. Yeah, it was a budget vote, and uh, she started riffing. She started talking. Oh, yeah, we should vote for this because of this. And then it's it's literally the vote. It's either yeah. a or nay. It was literally say yay or nay. Yeah. And we can we can play the clip. We have the clip. Yeah. It's either yay or nay, and this is what she does. Feinstein. Um, say aye. They're saying say aye. Uh, I I would like to support a yes vote on this. Um, It provides $823 billion. That's an increase of $26 billion for the Department of Defense. And it funds priorities submitted. Yeah, just say aye. Okay, just... I <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It's so cute. How pathetic. Yeah. She doesn't even know where she is. Yeah. Richard Rapway and I were talking about this. If like you're building your resume and you work on the hill or something and you're like a chief of staff or one of these people, mm-hmm. you know, oh, I work for Jim Jordan. He wakes up at 4 a.m. and works out. We can barely keep up with him. He's I, reading reports I don't even have access to. Yeah. Like I get the coffees and I help where I can. But, you know, he's kind of just doing it on his own. If you're running Diane Feinstein, you're basically in the Senate. You're like a 24 year old senator. It's like I ran Diane Feinstein all the way up to the end, basically a hospice nurse as well. Human meat puppeteer. <laughs> I just told her what to do all the time. Sometimes it didn't work. And I admit that. I admit my mistakes. Yeah. But if you're, if that's on your resume, like, oh, you know, 2020 to 2024, Diane Feinstein, chief of staff, yeah. you're getting any job you want. Same thing with Fetterman. I effectively <laughs> ran the state of Pennsylvania. You know, they're, they're yeah. one senator vote. Exactly. You're a 24-year-old intern who runs the whole operation. It's pretty yeah. impressive. So congrats to that guy. Yeah, that's like a – that's a sick resume. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually really impressive. All right, next, that Adam Schiff picture. So we got Adam Schiff here with Vinman, but then we also have Vinman as well. Who's the second Vinman? I didn't know there were two Vinmans. Is this like – and they're, it's not the same shirt. It's not a mirror thing. This is just two Vinmans? Yeah, and they're the exact same kind of guy. So I don't know. We'll have to look into this. We kind of brought this to the podcast prematurely. Yeah. We don't know yet. This is a last-minute ad. We got Vinman, Schiff, and Vinman as well. Yeah. So who is the other Vinman? Do you want to play this clip of Schiff that we have? Yeah, sure. About impeaching Joe Biden? Just because of the, the chef's kiss of yeah. irony here. The guy, Friendly reminder, Adam Schiff invented and, and led on the news – CNN for months about the Russian hoax, the Russian influence. And he's like, oh, I got stuff. <laughs> Just wait until I prove it. Yeah. It's four years now. He's going to gaslight us like a psycho. I think the Republican desire to impeach someone, anyone, uh, no matter whether there's any evidence, uh, just shows how they have uh, descended into, into chaos. So the Republicans have descended into chaos because we're impeaching Joe Biden over anything with without no evidence. evidence. Like, don't you say that? And like you, the inside of your brain is just like, no, 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 no. We can't say that. I wonder if if it de- uh, like for someone who tells the truth and tries to be a real person, like it definitely hurts. There's like that guilt within you. Yeah. But for him, he's so used to the media just going like, yeah, this guy, whatever he yeah. says he's right deep. now. He's deep in it. So I think there might be a difference in his brain chemistry and he doesn't feel bad at all. He's cool with it. Do you think he believes what he's saying? 
Almost. Or do you think at this point, he's kind of like, uh, it didn't look great for me. I don't think he believes what he's saying. He knows what he has to say, and he'll do it at every turn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which I, wow. I actually respect that. I know. It's kind of more impressive. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Moving on. We have an update from a former president, right? Ulysses S. Grant. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, so Ulysses S. Grant was a general in the Civil War, became president after that in the 1860s. Uh, we have an update from his great-great-grandson. Uh, it says, Ulysses S. Grant, great-great-grandson, an author of gay vampire fiction. Wow. That's why you put the time in. That's why you work so hard. Yeah. You have your house burned down. All these horrible things happen to your family. People died. Make the sacrifices. Civil War. And now your great great grandson's writing twink shit. Yeah, he's he's harvesting. You know, he's enjoying the freedom you gave him. <laughs> um, so yeah, it says on the top, I must study war so my sons can study business, so their sons can study art, so their sons can write gay vampire fiction. So we lost another one. Yeah, and it makes you wonder: Did Limp Biscuit get it right? There was an article we saw that rang true to me. It says, "Did Limp Biscuit predict the future? Because everything is fucked and everybody sucks." So it kind of does ring true to me. Yeah. They had to wait a little bit, but they got it right. Uh, you know what I was thinking about the other day? What? You know how the Democrats might be done with Joe Biden and they might want to get rid of him or let him get impeached or have him step down, not run for president? I mean, I think it would be the smart thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the move, right? You know how Hunter Biden's kind of in trouble? Yeah. Joe Biden could say, oh, Hunter Biden, he got caught doing deals and I knew about it. I forgot. <laughs> I'm so old and demented. I forgot. I can't remember anything. I better step down from president, and now I can't get in trouble. That's fair. That's a pretty good idea. That's fair. All right. As everyone knows from last week, um, I no longer drink plastic bottle water. We got rid of our Dasani's and got a uh, purifier, a water purifier. I'm also drinking my Arnold Palmer out of glass. No more drinking out of plastic. I got the double reverse osmosis water purifier, and then... Richard, you think I would be done, right? Yeah. Did all the things I have to do, and now I live a healthy life? Of course. And then I get DMs from people who are like, oh, watch out for that double reverse osmosis purifier. My nephew drank that, and he almost died from dehydration. Can't even win. Can't I just fucking make a change and do it, and it's over? All I had to do was that, and, and now I can right. just drink water? Yeah. No, turns out you can't. Oh, watch out. That double reverse osmosis, you can die from dehydration. So what do I do? Can't you can't just can't just get it right. Can't win. No, I guess you got to go back to the drawing board, and whatever yeah. money you spent is lit on fire, wasted. Yeah, there's oh, it's always something. There's always like, here's the correction. Oh, the correction. That's not the actual correct correction. You're not full all the way correct now. You have to do this to supplement the correction, or else it's not a full correction, or you're gonna die from dehydration from drinking the certain type of water. That's kind of life. Uh, life in the right wing too. In general, there's always some more deeper level of base that you have to go to, right? Mm -hmm. So same with yeah. water. And it happened with steaks too, you know? Oh, you don't cook don't cook it that way. That actually does this. Oh, do it this way. And it's like you think you're doing it right. Oh, I'm sous vide and then I'm searing on a cast iron. Oh, you're cooking the steak in plastic? And then and here we are again. What I put it right in the put it right in the skillet, I guess. Hey, I'm stuck in my ways. I wish I was, because now I have all this homework. <laughs> All right, next, the Subway naming thing. This is where we shine. It says, Subway offers contest winner free sandwiches for life if they change their name. So obviously you know what I think we should change Subway's name to. Yeah, buddy. Is that what you think this is? Snarf, snarf opportunity? Snarf, snarf. Opportunity. All he does, he goes through his phone and he just screenshots, oh, name something, oh, this, and he doesn't read it. They're offering free subs for someone to life if they change their first name to Subway. So you misunderstood um, and wasted everyone's time. I again. misunderstood the prompt. Yeah, I thought they were trying to get a new name for Subway. I'm assuming because it get rid of Jared Fogle leftover. Get brand that stink off of them. Get that stink off. So they want people to name themselves Subway? Nah, they just want someone to be named Subway. And you know what's sad is like this is turning into like idiocracy, like where some guy who's broke as fuck is just going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm Subway Johnson. And it's like kind of pathetic. <laughs> like that's almost bullying him. I would be Subway Talks. Oh. And you'd be Subway Rap Boy. 
I would not because I don't need free Subway for a year or but whatever. But Subway it is. Rap Boy might already be taken. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and Subway Talk sounds like a man on the street thing you do in New York. Yeah, fair. So that's not. Uh... So we're not done with it yet. We're not. So hey, leave it at this. Subway has the same name bug that we got. You know how we got that little bug in us that's like we want to name everything Snarf Snarf or Rob Smith something? Mm -hmm. Subway's got that same dog in them, too. Okay. That's fair. Because they want people to call themselves Subway. We want people to call stuff Snarf Snarf. I get where Subway's coming from. I also realized this while thinking about names. If you have a kid, you can name your kid Michael Jackson really easily. Michael is the first name. Jackson's the second name. And then whatever your last name is. This, I, I don't think you cracked anything there. But that's you could do cool. Michael Jordan. You could do Ooh, that's Anthony good. Hardaway Fletcher. Yeah, what's your middle name? Jordan. Like, what's your first name? Michael. Like Michael Jordan Fletcher. That's cool stuff. All right, let's that, try that out. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. There's like you can do a double name of an iconic person with the last name, so you didn't name your kid Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson Fletcher. That sounds like a nice American name. Jackson Fletcher Michael. Yeah. All right. We're on to something. Yeah. We'll just leave it with that. We're How on to something. How many pages left? <laughs> we have like one page left. Okay. All right. We've been watching Catfish lately. Uh, we watched the first five minutes. Then we fast forward to the reveal. Uh, yeah. That's a secret hack. You you get a little taste of the what it's like. You skip all the gay stuff in the middle. Yeah. And then you go right to the conversation. You see how delusional and idiotic the person is. Yeah. And you go to the fat fuck. Yeah. Exactly. You go to the fat lady in the suburbs. <laughs> in the trailer park. <laughs> Who's been leading you on for years. Um, so I have a theory. I think in the future of Catfish, they're gonna be there's going to be one where the person is like, oh, I'm here to meet a 25-year-old girl who's blonde or whatever. She looks like this. And they're going to get there, and it's going to be a, a trans person. It's going to be a guy who thinks he's a girl. And I think in the show, in the future, they're going to say, well, do you still like her? Because trans women are women. So yeah. if you think, oh, I'm meeting a, a 25-year-old hot girl, and it's a 25-year-old guy who's dressed like a girl, they're going to be like, the two gay guys that. are going to pressure you. Yeah, they're like, oh, that's a girl. <laughs> say, hey, what's what's wrong with Rachel? <laughs> and you start digging in. And, and then you're, they're going to pretend, they're going to gaslight you and pretend that that trans person is a girl. Okay. I think that's the future. That's fair. Um, do you want to say the, just while we're on this topic, I didn't know you were going to bring this up, but why don't you tell the Katy Perry one? Oh, yeah. Because that was so funny to me. So I watched one the other day where the guy thought he was talking to Katy Perry, and then he met the girl who was pretending to be Katy Perry, and she was like, yeah, that was me. I led you on for six years, blah, blah, Sorry. blah. And then he was like, I still think it's Katy Perry. And then he emailed the girl how they were communicating. He emailed her and was like, yeah, there was this person who came and said it was you, but I knew it wasn't you. I know you're really Katy Perry. So even after he thought it was still Katy Perry. He just put the blinders on. <laughs> it was like, no, I'm talking to Katy Perry still. Yeah. I don't understand the show that I'm on. Exactly. So that was the funniest I don't, thing. It's like, that's literally me. Like, I have your phone number. This is my email. It's on yeah. my phone. He was like, I still think it's Katy. Classic Katy. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on. Jason Aldean said the N-word. Yeah, Jason Aldean. I say it with the hard R. Thank you. That's what we need now is just people to take the stigma away from the word. Everyone says it. We all say it how we say it. We say it in the privacy of our own homes. Not a big deal. Jason Aldean coming out front and taking some arrows for us actually will go a long way for free speech. So Shout out to Jason. That's great. Uh, you know this is a meme though, right? Like a uh, not real? Yeah. They're like That's a joke. Like someone on the internet with a computer made that. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Well, we'll have to cut that out, Nick. Nick, make sure you cut that out, please, because I misunderstood the prompt. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, all right. Here's some non-financial advice from me. Bud Light's earnings are this week. They're on Thursday. Anheuser-Busch, Bud, stock ticker B-U-D. Bud, exactly. That's how I know you got them. The ticker is Bud. Yeah. Uh, so I bought puts, meaning I think it's going to go down. Not financial advice. It never is on this show. Uh, and I looked it up, and it's this is where I think we got them on Robinhood. And they, they've already gone down a little bit. Their their price has gone down mm -hmm. like after the initial boycott, but it's still pretty close to where it was. It was like, at sixty six, and then it went down to fifty low fifties, and now it's at fifty seven. And it yeah, and it started the day at fifty eight. So. so it's like they're pretty much where they were almost before the boycott, which don't sound right to me because that there ain't enough blood in the water. Yeah, it needs to get uglier. 
So on Robinhood, the bulls say, for Bud Light, the bulls say, running with net negative working capital and cash flow conversions above 100% of net profit, ABI is a cash generating machine, which should lead to strong shareholder returns in the long run. Oh, yeah. So oh. that's the bull case. And the bears are saying, consumers in developed markets are reducing their consumption of alcohol and switching out from beer into adjacent categories, most notably wine and spirits. Oh, yeah. And, and Fleckus says... No one's going to order a Bud Light ever again. <laughs> Nobody's getting <laughs> caught dead with that twink beer in their hand. Yeah. They're cratering. They'll never come back. Worst summer beer sales ever. In the history of beer. Oh, what's our guidance for Q3? Uh, people are going to continue to never drink Bud Light again. We have to move forward <laughs> without them. Yeah. But so it's so funny. Like they, they put it in their financial terms and it's like, no, no, we can simplify it. Yeah. Nobody fucking drinks it anymore. It's twink beer now. Twinks don't drink the beer, and the country guys don't want to be twinks. No more <laughs> beer not... company. So, uh, yeah, so Fleckus is in on puts. I didn't end up buying them. I was, like, looking at it, but they kind of got too expensive today for my taste. But we'll see. I believe in the thesis. I just don't believe in the theta decay yeah. and losing that money. And the thesis is in place just because all the smart people, oh, Budweiser is a great company. And then the, and then the people who think it's going to go down, they say, oh, well, people are drinking uh, wines in different spirits. No one's drinking Bud Light. You go to the store and you say, get beer. Okay, which one? Anything but Bud Light. Okay. That's how it works now. Yeah. No, it's like no one's ever going to drink Bud Light again. And then Q3 of the rest of the summer – all right, what are we projecting? Zero. I'll tell you. Zero. Zero yeah. beers. How does zero beers do on the on the bottom line? It's not good. <laughs> Frank, it's not good. <laughs> How many? Yeah. Zero, Frank. How no. many renewals? <laughs> we have some automatic sales, right? No, Frank, everyone canceled. And so the earnings are Thursday, so we might be able to talk about it on the Friday podcast, but probably not. But yeah. keep an eye on that. And maybe I'm wrong. It's never financial advice. Oh, but of course That's not. what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. playing the where politics meets Wall Street and people are scared to like say what's going on. This is a perfect example. It's like I know politics really well. I know the the beer drinkers, Bud Light beer drinkers really well, too. And if you're going to tell me you're bearish because people are drinking wine instead, you got the whole thing wrong. No one's going to drink Bud Light ever again. Yeah. You did the Dylan, the Dylan Mulvaney twink stuff. Your company's over. Yeah. Like, that's it. Zero. Yeah. Zero. And then Bud Light sales are only 10% of the company's revenue. Yeah. that's And that's why I didn't do it is because they have so many other products and, like, th they're just a giant beverage company. Their margin is set. They make about the same revenue every quarter. So it... So that's fair, but what happens when 10% of your company goes from 10% of your company to zero? Yeah. <laughs> Can't be good. Can't be good. Yeah. So I'm, I'm expecting uh, the Q2 to be a bloodbath with Q3 guidance of just puke. Guidance is the key. Yeah. That's where- They might even say we have no guidance. We're gonna say, well, or they could say we're going to sell zero Bud Lights. <laughs> the guidance for Q3 is zero. So yeah. that's what's going to happen. Maybe not financial advice. And that'll be a fun one to watch in general, If even if you're on the sidelines just for the right way, yeah. to you, see how bad we killed someone. Fleckus has puts. You got to cheer me on. We want. I, I want Bud Light to go to 39. That's my vision. <laughs> Bud that's Light. crazy. That's crazy. All right, moving on. Last piece of housekeeping. Uh, building the courage, girl. Yeah, let's, let's, let's see this idiot. confrontation. Deep breath. Excuse me for interrupting, but asking nicely hasn't work out. A million young people wrote to the administration pleading not to approve a disastrous oil drilling project in Alaska, and we were ignored. So I'm here channeling the strength of my ancestors and generation. Will the administration will the administration stop approving new oil and gas projects and align with youth, science, and frontline communities from the north slope of Alaska to Louisiana? I, first of all, I appreciate your courage. And everyone clapped. KJP goes, first of all, I appreciate your courage. And they all clapped. So yeah. it's like, oh, building the courage. Like, it's not even hard to do it. Yeah. Everyone's on your side. And then also, we don't need drilling advice from a 16-year-old girl. We need more from, like, dumb high schoolers. We need the LeBron math kids to decide our energy <laughs> policy. <laughs> yeah, we need the LeBron math kids, David Hogg, this girl, to yeah. get into a round table. And then, the, and then you call it, a, what to do. call it a think tank. Get, get those people involved. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we might as well let a toddler 
crawl and it's like new drilling or no new drilling and then let the baby decide wherever it goes yeah someone is this person is convinced that it's like good indigenous people versus bad white guys oh for sure and that's what politics is for sure and the fake crying oh, my uh, end channeling my ancestors uh, and she drove there this girl's a political activist right and she drove there she drives back She'll get on a flight to go to spring break this year. You know, she'll she'll consume oil. She just wants it to be from Saudi Arabia, I guess. Yeah. She wants America to continue to export dollars to Saudi Arabia instead of grabbing it out ourselves. Yeah. And that's the funny part. It's like drilling oil in America, I'm sure, relative to pretty much everywhere else, has stricter regulations and like environmental protections mm -hmm. than pretty much any Middle East cash grab oil pile. Yeah. So it's just so weird. It's very, this is just pawns. They're getting used. And that's it. That's the end of housekeeping. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. All right. We'll see you later. Uh, before we get into cringe of the week, this housekeeping was brought to you by fuckustalks.com. Guys, if you love the show, you'll love bonus land. You'll love the Q and A's that we do. Go to fleckastalks.com, sign up today. The first month is free. It supports the show. It's the reason we're able to do two times a week is because of all the people who have joined fleckastalks.com. So if you love the show, you'll love a 30-minute bonus land that comes out Friday right after or the Q&A that's going to come out on Monday coming up. Monday, we have another Q&A coming up. Get your questions in in the comments as well, and we are going to answer a bunch of them in our Q&A. Fleckastalks.com, please sign up. I'm desperate. It's pathetic. All right, first clip of Cringe of the Week. The arrested child murderer is getting fake tax-funded tits. Yeah. That doesn't <laughs> sound good. Yeah. <laughs> Shockingly enough, transgender, uh, transgender double murder, double murderer Jessica Marie Hahn, who killed both her babies, will receive taxpayer-funded breast implants in California women's jail. So this person <laughs> killed both their kids and almost a third kid. Yeah, they killed uh, this guy, killed two of his kids. They were found in separate storage lockers somewhere with identifying information that tied them back to him. He got put on death row because obviously you kill multiple kids and uh, endangered a third. They found it with broken ribs and stuff. Um, this guy basically was just a child killer sentenced to death row. And now he got moved off death row. And so he's able to now get breast implants in the women's prison. Because if he doesn't get the gender affirming care he needs, he might be a threat to himself. He might kill himself. Yeah. So he needs so. to get tax-funded uh, breast implants. And so you might ask yourself, you know, this is a uniquely California thing for the most part, but I'm yeah. assuming other liberal states are going to have more, oh, that's a woman now. He uh, he raped 10 people as a man, but that's a woman now. Yeah. Um, and so California has a 10% state income tax, mm -hmm. right? Um, so California, they're raking in the cash off you Johnny Taxpayer. So they must have a lot of advances. You Flying might, cars. You might wonder. Yeah. The, it has to be a high-speed rail system somewhere. Yeah. Gets you from San Francisco <laughs> to LA in an hour, right? Clean beaches, clean roads, maybe public gardens. Yeah. No, turns out the only thing we do is uh, babysit third worlders and give men tits in <laughs> yeah, prison. Give murderers, <laughs> give murderous men tits. So yeah, Gavin Newsom for president. Yeah, free health care for everybody, only if you're illegal immigrant. Just the illegals. Just Sorry, the illegals. guys. Everybody else, you got to pay. A little tip for this guy, if he's trying to look more feminine, uh, your eyebrows. Your brow, We saw this from this other post. Your eyebrows do uh, wonders. Yeah, this other this is the tip, the tipper. Getting my eyebrows whacked and shaped has really helped feminize my face. Forty two male to female, almost three years on HRT. Look at that huge difference! Wow. So you're telling me with three only three years on HRT, you could look you like, could look like that picture on the right, you look like the guy from Shrek. Worse, average <laughs> villager from Shrek, not even a woman one, um, dude. And so uh, there's something I've noticed with all these transgender people, like who barely get on HRT and they do something, all the guys and guys to girls are the ones who are the real menace to society, but they all just look pretty much exactly the same. And then they make a face that's like this, mm -hmm. like a soft woman smile. They try to mimic it. And it's like, they try to look cute. They try to look cute. And it's just so embarrassing. Um, that's yeah. It's really cringe when they try to look cute. Here's another one. David, David Benson, non-binary male lesbian, looking to meet other lesbians on Facebook. Biological women only, please. 
Yeah, but if someone else said biological woman only to this person, he would be mad about it. <laughs> yeah, David doesn't like that, but his preferences matter. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know what I was thinking about that? What? You know how people, like, say us, uh -huh. if we weren't, like, if we weren't confident about something, yeah. like, just look at this guy. If you, That's if so you're, true. If you're ever feeling insecure or, like, should I ask for that raise or should I ask that girl out or... You think I should try an open mic night at the comedy place? If you're ever wondering, you should because this person's going for it. Yeah, because this guy has been three years on HRT and got his eyebrows trimmed. And if he's going out in public and doing whatever he thinks is right, I think you can take a risk and be a little more confident in yourself. Yeah, take that leap. Take that leap. Because there are transgender men <laughs> thinking they're women everywhere. Who are so leaping leap. way further and harder than you. Yeah. And they're going for it. So if they're going for it, you can go for it too, guys. Uh, let's go through the the person fleeing Florida, the family fleeing Florida because they can't sterilize their children. Yeah, this was uh, this was kind of a story that we missed last week, but we, we can't skip it, you know? I remember Tori coming to me one time and in tears, which she doesn't normally do. And I asked her what was wrong and she said DeSantis. And like the fact that a governor would be making my kid cry, that's a messed up government. We're absolutely moving because of the political climate and the laws in Florida. We didn't want to move. When the Florida Board of Medicine started meeting, and we realized that they were going to ban gender affirming care for our kids that we might need to leave because that is life saving essential medicine and treatment for our life saving. Daughter. You notice how they never actually tell you, they never spell out why it's life saving. Yeah. They never say, ah, it's life saving. They need it. Cause they're going to die if they can't cut their dick off. Yeah. Cause like, where's the death part come from? Who, who, who does the death? Where, where does that come from? Yeah. Why, why would they die? Yeah, exactly. So it's life-saving care because they need to really cut their dick off or else they'll kill themselves. So I, I like – I don't just say life-saving care. I like – I want them to spell it out for me every time. Yeah, like really make them explain. And like life-saving care is like the same as like climate crisis or climate emergency. It's like that same empty phrase that sounds really important and yeah. it sounds like exactly what it is, but then it's not – like Planned Parenthood. And it's like, oh, that sounds like a place where they do all kinds of things to help potential parents. And it's yeah. like planning on no parenthood. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all these phrases, climate emergency, Planned Parenthood, life-saving, gender-affirming care. It's all like these empty things that are just little – they put them up so you can kind of not get past it. And then they think it's enough to not have to explain how like horrible and what they're really doing. Yeah. So if you actually make them explain, it's like, well – I need to sterilize my son, cut off his testicles. And he's under 18. That's what the law affects yeah, right so now. He's under 18. I need to cut off his dick or else he'll kill himself. Yeah. What? That's What kind of house are you running? <laughs> yeah, what is Ron DeSantis' yeah, problem? Where does the governor of Florida come into this? <laughs> yeah, what, uh, what kind of house are you running? Yeah, what's going on at home? Yeah, Do exactly. we need to come and take someone away? But yeah, and it's so funny. We're moving from Florida. We wouldn't have moved otherwise. They probably like took an L. You know, yeah. oh, if moving costs uh, 10 grand just so we can continue to mutilate our child. And then this is like the same parents. Like, do you think these parents will will ever be capable of switching back and being like, whoa, we made a mistake. Oh, no. Rushing that. No, because the the same reason we said last week, they'll they'll constantly need to defend their position. Otherwise, they did. They horribly disfigured their child. Yeah. You know, so there's no going back once you've made that leap. Yeah, exactly. Let's go. Uh, the, the euthanasia request denied. Yeah, this is another thing with a constant thread of gender affirming. This is whatever. the other side of it. So this is a person in Canada who trans in, yeah, go tra for it. Trans indigenous Canadian slams doctors for denying her euthanasia request, saying death would be better than her constant pain from a surgically built vagina. So these people, even after they get the gender affirming This was surgery, life saving, gender affirming penis removal. Still wants to kill himself. And this guy with no dick no anymore. With is, like a rotting hole yeah, that it, some doctor made for a hundred grand. Yeah, is in constant pain and needs to die with permission from the Canadian government. But he also needed to get his dick cut off or else he would have killed himself. So you're uh, just suicidal the whole time. So yeah, did they kill himself? <laughs> when, when did they kill themselves? Before? After? During the surgeries? You know? Are those rates the same? What are we seeing here with the data? Because you can't just threaten to kill yourself all the time and then hope that that works politically speaking. 
That's kind of what they do. I know. And then they go to the doctors and they keep trying to make the doctors feel bad. Like, now you need to kill me because of that surgery you did. Yeah. And the doctor's probably like, dog, I, I just did what you told me to do. Yeah. I don't, I you I signed helping. up. I don't know. There's, there's This isn't much of a back and forth. You either want the surgery or you don't. You yeah, know? exactly. Um, all right. Let's go to the drag queen, the kids touching the drag queens inappropriately. We'll probably have to blur this. <laughs> We haven't done a drag queen clip in a while. Yeah. They've been quiet. They've been waiting. Kid touches the boob. Drag queen doesn't do much. Drag queen likes it. Drag queen probably likes it, yeah. This is very inappropriate, obviously. We have to blur it a little bit. That's enough. I think we see what's going on here. Yeah. Uh, you know what's interesting about the drag queens? What? You never, you know, they need to read to kids. Yeah, of course. They need to have their drag shows in front of kids. Oh. I've never seen a drag show at an old person home. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen them go read to old people mm -hmm. or go read to, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I've never seen drag queens just like show up after in the aftermath of a hurricane. Yeah. It's not really charitable acts. It's not really like they're helping. We're anybody. here to help out. We only want to help with the kids. Yeah. We all we only want to help out with the kids in that really ripe zone where we can have an impact on their brain. Yeah. We're, we're not here to help society. Never saw a drag queen food drive. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and then that's also the point, too. It's like, oh, the, the first, we talked about it last week. The first transgender candidate was a pedophile who got elected to New Hampshire mm -hmm. State Legislature. Um, it's like, can you ever imagine a trans person getting into politics and being like, okay, I just got in. Woo! It's time to eliminate that trade deficit. Yeah. No, they're fucking only care about trans shit. They only care about trans shit. And then for anything else, they'll it's just do what like Chuck Schumer says. The party line. Exactly. And then that's how they get them. So it's like, we need you in so bad for representation because trans people are so oppressed. You need to vote for trans people because they're getting they're, they're Everyone's killing trans people. All right. We vote a trans person in money to Ukraine. Yeah. Money to Ukraine. Open the borders. Sanctuary cities. Trans stuff in front of the kids. And it's like whenever a trans thing comes across the desk, they'll fill it out. Oh, drag queen story hour is not banned. Oh, what do I do on this Ukraine spending? And Chuck Schumer goes, just sign yes. Yeah. Just say I. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> You're Diane Feinstein. And then they I saw this meme, keep the guns, ban the schools. It was pretty funny. That's true. I agree with that. All right, moving on. We're still in cringe. <laughs> no subtext at all. Yeah. Just that's good. One for one trade. Good meme. Yeah. Uh, cringe of the week. We are still there. The guy spent 20K to become a dog. Yeah, so this guy is actually stunting on all these eyebrow people. That looks like a real dog. The dogs think he's a real dog. Yeah, dogs are going crazy. So he's passing. Yeah, he passes. He's got a pretty cute handler, too. I'm impressed. Nice. They, go, they all love it. And the dogs think he's real. They can't tell the difference. Like, trans people can kind of take notes here. He's passing. He actually cares. He didn't leave the house until he was ready. Yeah. He didn't leave the house with just like, you know, some fur and like some fake paws. He didn't he, make anybody pretend. He had the full outfit. Yeah. And he did it right. And he looks like he has a potential love interest in his handler, that female. <laughs> that handler? She's not bad. Normal bodied person. Yeah. So. Yeah, not bad. Let's go to the psychic who talks to the dog. <laughs> I saw this the other day. Throw me away. Don't throw me away. She was found with two other beagles in a crate behind an apartment. So she was clearly tossed into a place and left. Pause it real quick. Look at that dog's body language. Yeah. And then, like, clearly you're bringing a dog to a psychic to talk to the dog because the dog's got problems. Why does the dog have problems? It was probably abused and then adopted. Yeah. So it's like. Oh, the dog said that he's scared you're going to throw him away. Keep going. Yeah. No, you're not going to lose her. I don't want to lose her. I don't want to lose her. That's what the dog's saying. Okay. I will stay right here, okay? Okay. She says, I don't like it when you get too close. Okay. Okay. You're such a good girl. You're, okay, I don't, I don't like it when she leaves. I'm afraid she's not going to come back. Mm. And the owner's like, oh, you're just doing the most general dog things ever. Yeah. The dog wants to go to the park. 
Yeah. Oh, when he sees people out the window, he doesn't know them, so he barks to alert you. But he doesn't want to hurt them, but he just isn't sure who they are, and they might try to hurt us. I'm seeing a theme emerging here. Dog psychics, $20,000 dog costume, the trans guy who posts his face everywhere says he's a girl now. You guys got to go for that promotion. Yeah. Everybody here needs to reach for something. Everyone here this week is going to ask their boss for a 10% raise. <laughs> Everyone else is doing that. Everybody else is going nuts. So you might as well reach out and grab something. This person had a woman in their home with a dog and is saying what the dog is saying to her in her brain and yeah. charging for it. Yeah. I think you can uh, ask that girl out on a date. That girl is a, that lady is a psychopath. Oh, yeah. He's cold blooded. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And that's the same thing as Adam Schiff from before. Yeah. He just tells the lie and he's comfortable with it. It's so impressive almost. There are people out there who are comfortable just lying to your face, hiding the truth, pretending they're a dog psychic for their dog psychic fee. What it, what could it be, Max? 150? She comes for a consultation. It's 150? We might need to contact her. So, yeah. I mean, go for reach for the stars, guys, because everybody else, every weirdo on earth is doing it. So, uh, Everyone's what's, the, doing it. what's the worst that could happen? All right, let's go to the sparkling water on a date part. We're getting into sort of this section with like women, rotten girl section, dating sort of thing. Let's check this one out. This woman's uh, like kind of a dating coach. Yeah, for girls. You're out for dinner with the men. And the waitress comes over and she says, would you like tap or sparkling for the table? You must say sparkling. You are showing him everything about you is not free. From the water you drink to the way that you are dressed. Everything comes at a cost. Sound like a prostitute. <laughs> Do you even like sparkling water? How'd you meet this guy? <laughs> Do you even like him? Yeah. So everything comes at a cost. That sounds like a nightmare date. And it's also the gamification of dating. Like, you need to be constantly charging him and, like, seeing if he'll allow this. Yeah. And as long as he's the richest guy in the world, you'll have found your match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And the waiter, the, I think the waiter would probably figure it out, too. And Absolutely. Like, this lady's just adding everything. So it's like, oh, and by the way, you can add a lobster tail to any entree. And like, he looks at her. He goes, yeah, ma'am, lobster tail. You're worth it. Chicken Alfredo with the lobster tail. <laughs> he keeps gaslighting her. Creme brulee. And he's like, now that, steak, now that steak you just ordered, sir, that can come with 24 karat gold covering. And he looks back at the woman. Should he get that? <laughs> just upsells her all day. Yeah, that steak you ordered can also have another steak added on top of it. Yeah. Two steaks. Um, and dude, it's just so funny. I mean, the it goes for both ways, right? The male dating coaches, the, the pickup artists, and then the female dating coaches. It's like the, the men are trying to fuck you. The women are trying to take as much money as they can. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't really help you. You know, you, Johnny Showwatcher, doesn't mm -hmm. really give me any much idea. Yeah. Why don't you talk about your families and like go for a walk first and see if you're compatible and then see if dinner's next, you know? Yes. Go out for ice cream. See if you guys laugh about anything. Yeah. Don't, don't. And the men, you shouldn't think you're fucking her. And women, you shouldn't think you're milking him for cash. <laughs> milking and may for cash. And maybe that's a healthy start. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just a guy. If, yeah, maybe meet for coffee. And if they're not like, well, this isn't expensive enough. And maybe you found a decent one. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the girl who said the guy smiling gave her the ick. What's the craziest thing you got the ick for? I don't like to see happiness sometimes. I don't know. I just saw a man like smiling. <laughs> like, you know, after a party when you're popping balloons and like he was popping the balloon and he was like playing with it before he popped it. And I looked over and I was just like, hmm, all the sexual tension leaving the room. <laughs> so this is why you're single, I guess. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> so she saw the guy laughing. It's my and fault. And that made her not want to have sex with the stranger that night. <laughs> oh, oh. And it's funny because like the, I believe her. Yeah, me you know, too. First of all, I believe her. I believe she was instantly unattracted from seeing a guy dancing around popping balloons, right? Yep. And then I think that's because she got her brain fried from watching too much Euphoria. Yeah. And like Sex in the City and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So now she says, I'm no longer interested in having sex with this stranger tonight because I saw him laughing and popping the balloons. And then, like, the guys who teach the game, like, on how to game chicks will be like, you can never look weak. Yeah. <laughs> and they're right. They're right to an extent. Yeah. You to know? get like a girl like this, yeah. you're never going to want to look weak. You always want to be strong and masculine. And that way you can have a one night stand with this girl with the broken fried brain. Yeah. 
That's how you get her. Exactly. <laughs> and so it's like neither people, neither person should be playing that game. It's not healthy for society or life or your mental health if you're playing that game. Um, but yeah, no, I believe her. This girl, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you that much. I believe. Does that mean she's a good person or anything? No, but yeah. And I think there's a thing too where if you see girls like this or social media of girls like this or you come across girls like this, it would maybe make you think all girls are like that. And then if you treat all girls like they're like that, when you meet a nice girl, they're not going to say they're not going to accept that. So then you're going to lose your chances with the nice girl because you assumed all girls are shitty brain fried, you know, sex girls. That's a very good point. And then you run your game on the really nice girl who actually liked you. And mm -hmm. then, oh, shit, I fucked it up. And she doesn't like, like oh, that. Yeah. Like, I'm not hanging out with you. Like, I'm not going back to your place on, after the first date. And then you kind of like you have to wire your brain. So it's like if you assume every girl is like the shitty girl, the nice girls won't go very far with you like past the first date because your brain's fried and you're only trying to attract the, the shitty fish. Yeah. Make sure you get the sparkling water, though. All right. Let's do the next one. Um, the lady who married her Ecuadorian kayak instructor. So on well, the left. She didn't marry him. Oh, OK. What happens when you this is a before and after we saw and we just wanted to kind of throw it in the dating section. Uh, what happens when you get pregnant on vacation and marry your Nicaraguan kayak guide? Oh, she does marry him. Mm. Uh, and there he is, the Nicaraguan kayak guide. She was on vacation. And then the after is a day in the life of a sad single mom. Yeah. So there's the before and after. That's what happens when you think like, oh, my life's like a movie. I'm, I, I'm like Karen from Sex in the City. I'm on vacation. Like, yeah. let's go. And then the Heat Nicaraguan. the moment, yeah. I'm hooking up with the kayak, the kayak coach. Our eyes locked in the Nicaraguan, like, and his sweat was glistening. And it's like, yo, you're the third group he's done this week. Yeah. You know, you don't think the Nicaraguan guy who banged you was doing that to any of the other tourists? Exactly. And then like these people like think their life is a movie and they would like look down on like people they went to high school with who got like married at 24 mm -hmm. and have three kids. And then like, oh, that's boring. Like you, that's a boring life. Like you're a side character. I'm the main character. I go to Nicaragua. And yeah. Do whatever I want. And I bang the kayak coach. But it's like those high school people that you thought were boring have like families and land and maybe a lake house now and like a nice six figure income probably. And you're a single mom. And you're a sad single mom who got yeah. banged by the kayak coach. <laughs> coach. Um, yeah. And it's like this girl, you know, maybe your dad was right. Maybe your dad, maybe your parents, maybe the elders have some knowledge. Date someone who kind of looks like you, who comes from the same culture Oh, you're both from the suburban Midwest? Why don't you find another one like you? Mm -hmm. You're probably compatible. No? You want the exotic Nicaraguan? Okay. For a night? Yeah. He's in Nicaragua. You don't exactly get support. And then it's like after you do that, then it's like, well, now I want to find the nice guy from high school. I, I Now I learned my mistake. And it's like he's got more options than that. Yeah. You had one bullet and you misfired, you know? Yeah. So it's like go, there, yeah, guard yourself, you know? And um, – Hey, guys, girls everywhere, maybe dad's not dumb. Mm -hmm. Maybe your dad lived the exact same life that you probably did, but on the opposite end, you know, uh, be, and he's just old now, but those values, you know, they got him, they served him, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, there was an Owen Benjamin video earlier in the week, or maybe it was last week. Um, we don't have it here. It was just like him doing a stream that I was watching. Yeah. And he made a really good point. And he said, every time you have sex, you're making a decision. You're either going to have a baby and raise it, have a baby and abandon it, or kill your baby. And that's pretty true, guys and girls. But every time you're involved in a casual situation, though that like, and the result could be pregnancy, you're already in your head deciding, I'm either going to have this child and raise it, I'm going to have this child and ignore it, or I'm going to kill the child before it's born. Yeah. So that's something you guys should think about. Uh, which takes us to our next thing, the abortion recipe. This sick fuck. This very stable genius here is holding a sign outside of a, what is this, an abortion center or, a, yeah. or just a protest? Uh, it says, recipe, feed a cider smoothie, half cup vanilla yogurt, uh, apple peeled and diced, uh, half cup apple cider, one tablespoon honey, and then one third cup fetal remains. Mm. Blend all with ice and enjoy. Yeah. So it used to be abortion, safe, rare, and legal. Now- Blend it into a juice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make like, it into a smoothie. And then my thing is, look at this clear homosexual woman, right? This has got to be a lesbian. Gay mask on, stupid glasses, flat brim hat. That's t telltale signs of a lesbian, right? Mm -hmm. What does she care? 
She's going to go scissor her buddy Brenda. Yeah. You've already eliminated your bloodline. You're not. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So she wants more bloodlines, right? She's, it's called working for the devil. Yeah, it's demon, demon inspired. So yeah. working for the devil to get other people to do an abortion when you have no chance of getting pregnant. Yeah. Okay. The devil convinced you to be a pansexual or whatever and not have any kids. Fine. But then when you go out and try to convince others, it's called working for the devil. What a good use of your time. All right, moving on. We're out of Cringe of the Week, and we're into Urban Decay. Urban Decay is a little fast today. It's kind of like a before and after. How are we doing on time? Uh, we're okay on time, but okay. that's why Urban Decay is a little fast today. Uh, so remember that lady from last week? We're going to kind of like speed round through these. Um, the lady from last week who was on the highway who was naked shooting the gun? Yeah, naked shoot. Uh, and we said, oh, now that she shoots the gun, now she can get arrested? Yep. No charges for her. We were wrong. We were wrong we, about that. We thought that was a line in the sand, but apparently the line keeps moving in yeah. San Francisco, and then firing a gun at moving cars is not the line anymore. Yep. And then there was another clip. I don't know if we played it in Bonus Land or not, but a car got, a people stole a car, and then they drove it off a cliff. Here's the video. Yeah. So this is a stolen car. Stolen car flies off a cliff, crashes, could have killed somebody you know, walking their dog, fucked up that car and then it landed on no charges for that person either. Stolen car, no charges. Yeah. And the San Francisco DA um, was tweeting about it saying like, it's a more complex situation than we realize. Like we can't necessarily press charges, blah, blah, blah. Drove the car off the cliff, stole the car. Yeah. You go to jail. Yeah. No, they're actually Hispanic. Oh. And it's so stupid because it's like, even if you were a scumbag district attorney, you would at least charge them and then drop it off later after the news died down, right? Yeah. But the Quietly. fact that they're not even doing that, like, shows how little they fucking care, right? Yep. And then um, Elon Musk changed Twitter's name from Twitter to X Corp, right? Yeah. And then uh, he was flashing the X logo, like, projecting it on the building. And the city of San Francisco is complaining about that. What's that AP headline? San Francisco has opened a complaint and launched an investigation of a giant X sign that cropped up on top of the downtown headquarters of social media platform formerly known as Twitter. So that's a big investigation, right? Mm. So I guess it's annoying. The X must, the X sign must be annoying to people trying to do fentanyl and shit on the ground. Yeah, it might get in the way of the muggings and the car <laughs> break-ins. You know, it might kind of be a hindrance to society, yeah. right? And then there was, uh, we have, we showed this before, but they have the app in San Francisco that shows you where the human shit is. Yeah, and the whole city is covered in shit. Of course. And everyone's doing drugs, and it's like open drug trades and black markets, and everyone's fucked up and is like rotting from trank and like has skin lesions. And so th this is kind of the broader theme of this section is like the anarcho tyranny of it all. Yeah. And this is what Cernovich said. He goes, uh, I was walking in Los Angeles. Across the streets were tents on the sidewalk. Was about to cross a flashing don't walk sign because why not? It's lawless. There aren't any rules. Old Asian woman stops me. Don't do that. My friend got a jaywalking ticket last week. Anarcho tyranny. And it's like, yeah, let's worry about the X on the Twitter building. But, you know, and, and let's worry about jaywalking. But people can shit, steal, rob, piss, sleep outside yeah. of business. No fucking problem. Right. So if you are if you jaywalk, you get a ticket because you're a competent person who knows better. But if you do fentanyl or shoot heroin or rob someone, or shit on the ground, you don't get in trouble because... You're just down on your luck. You don't know anything, you know? <laughs> yeah, you didn't know. You didn't know you couldn't shit outside of the Wawa. But you cross the street real quick when there's no cars coming. It's like, that's who you crack down on? So yeah. I'm gonna, I wish I could buy puts on California already. Yeah, uh, and then there's another example, which, I mean, and this is what we see everywhere, right? In the big city, the Soros-type DAs, the uh, anarcho-tyranny where you're held to a certain standard and it's like, it's the same thing. You're, you pay your taxes, you pay everything and you have to basically make $10 million or something to feel rich in California. Mm -hmm. Then there's a point where you get, Oh, I'm above it. Feels great. You know, hard to get there. But until then the middle gets squeezed, the bottom does whatever they want. The top does whatever they want. Cause they're rich enough. They don't care. But then the middle just gets squeezed. You have to follow the rules. You get the tickets, you get fucked. Right. Mm hmm. So here's the state of New York in two tweets. Uh, it says, sex for sale. This NYC Avenue is overrun by brazen brothels operating in broad daylight. Shows all these women. These all It's probably somewhere in Chinatown, it looks like, because it's all Asians. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's all the old rub and tug spots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> so they can get out there and solicit, you know, 
literal prostitution from businesses. Yep. And, you know, whatever. Oh, it's a problem, I guess. But then uh, you can't have ketchup packets. NYC to begin banning ketchup napkins in takeout orders. Because that's causing problems. Because that, you know, that ruined the city. Yeah. Ketchup and fucking napkins. For Shit on the ground eat. and do drugs and have sex with prostitutes. They don't know any better. Whatever. You ordering food, you can afford to order food, have it delivered by someone else. We're gonna we're gonna squeeze that guy. Time to tax the pig. You know, let's squeeze <laughs> the pig. Yeah. Who's giving us all the money? And then also the Roosevelt Hotel in New York uh, is overrun with illegals. I think it's full of illegals. And then here's outside the illegals who didn't get rooms, and they rush the doors of the hotel. Oh, multicolored, multi-ethnic. Yeah, we owe these people. Yeah, we owe them. And it's like, you know, oh, these people are down on their luck. They need help. They're fleeing, whatever. Oh, is it just them? Is it this is 2,500? And then once we get them all squared away, we're all good? No, there's a billion people who are in third world countries that would like to live here instead of where they're at. And it's actually more than that. It's like four billion. Like half the who are whole planet. Global poverty. Would like to come to America, probably. Yeah. So it's impossible. Uh, the van meat seller. This might be my favorite clip of the whole week. What kind of meat you got? What is it? Beef or pork? Beef? Okay. Oh, you got cash apps? No cash apps? Like speaks no English. And, you know. Unrefrigerated uh, minivan in L.A. And then that's where this the, the taco trucks Get their two dollar tacos. Oh, these two dollar tacos are so cool. Diversity. Oh, the, the immigrants come here. Yeah, abuelita. She she does yeah. the tacos from the side of the road. Yeah, until you get E. coli, and then you go, yeah, you gave me E. coli. And it's oh, he goes yeah, no English. E. Coli? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no problem. He's trying to ask him if it's beef. He can't even tell him if it's beef. Beef or pork? Can't goes, even. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You gave me E. coli. I'm sick to my stomach. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay. Someone owes me money. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It, 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 no problem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like that so, soft smiling. Oh, no, no problem. And, you know, like you, you you look at those rundown food trucks or whatever. It's like, I don't know. Who's checking? Who's checking where they got the meat from? The old mm -hmm. mini Chrysler minivan with no refrigeration maybe. Yeah, exactly. Good right. luck. Moving on. The Asian lady gets punched. This is just a one-two for Elon Omar. Yeah. So... This Asian lady gets punched by this young black man. Yep. I'm guessing. Boom. Um, stop Asian hate. Remember they try to do that and blame it on white people and kind of like uh, pretend it was, you know, stop Asian hate. Hate Asian hate crimes, blah, blah, blah. White supremacy is our biggest problem. That like was kinda, my favorite. They kind of put it next to each other. And like, are you alluding to white people being the ones that are punching the Asian people? Because we have ring cams. Uh, we have ring cams. We have security cams and... There's really a, just a ton of black people swinging on elderly Asians. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what started this, too. Do you have any thoughts on that? What started the swinging on elderly Asians trend? I Obviously, think, we can say mental health or whatever yeah. you want to talk about. Well, I, think, I think everyone you know in America is scared to be considered racist. Like, mm -hmm. white people are scared to do anything against any other race. Yeah. I think Asian people, like old school, like off-the-boat Asian people— I think they're racist towards black people mm -hmm. and then they bring that with them and they don't care and they'll say the N-word or they'll kind of like, ah, I'm not serving you. I don't. So well, I think they'll do shit like that. And then black people in their mind are like like criminal black people who are looking to throw punches are like, oh, Asian people. They're always they're they're racist to us. Well, I'm going to get them back. I think I, it's like that. OK, I, I have a theory that's kind of like it's immigrant slash minority jealousy. Like, like the Asians you're, are doing good. You're a minority in America, but you have your own community. You do really well. Like Asians uh, typically and Chinese yeah. make it out. So it's kind of like a man, fuck you. I've been here for a while and I'm just mentally ill on the street. Mm -hmm. You know? So there's a little bit of resentment there. Maybe a little but, bit of both. Let's we'll yeah. see what Ilan Omar says. I would say uh, uh, our, our country should be more fearful um, of, of, of white men across our country because they are actually um, causing uh, most of the deaths within this country. Oh, yeah. Did she just admit to not understanding per capita? I think that's what that was. Yeah. I think she just said, hey, I don't know what per capita means. I look at the graph and white people are the most. Um, so this, yeah, so this Somali immigrant who did illegal immigration who is now in Congress in a country built by white people 
is telling us that we need to be fearful of white people. How do they do it in Somaliland? Yeah. How do you keep the peace there? Did you bring anything with you that we can use? Yeah, Somalia is a notoriously well-run country with, uh, you know, layers of power, checks and balances. No warlords. No warlords. (laughs) Uh, You know, nobody's just high on cot trying to fucking attack a tanker for 100 grand USD. And well, then another, exactly, another explanation for this, uh, the average IQ in Somalia is, drum roll please, 68. Oh, <laughs> that ain't passing. That's low. That's low. Guys. So 68, maybe that's why you have that point of view on that yeah. subject. Good talking point though, Ilhan. Yeah. See you at the re-election campaign. Um, all right, moving on. Don't get too down. Don't get too depressed. We are into uplifting gold. Um, all right, let's go to the first clip. Saying the N-word's not racist. We have a short uplifting gold. Tell them your name. Tanaya. Okay, see, and aren't you my birth- best friend at work? Yes. So I'm not racist. <laughs> people, That's good. People That's good. think I'm really racist. Are you serious? Because, like, there was a video on here, and mm. I said I sang the N-word, but I didn't. <laughs> That's where she starts to take it and teeter it and explain, because I, I like sang the manager. N-word. Yeah, because I sang the N word. Well, yeah. that, that's proof. Yeah. You can say the N word and then not be racist. Yeah, that's yeah. good proof. Yeah. All right, go to the origami man. We're gonna have to speed through uh, uplifting. Are we over our time? We're we're right at it. Look up. Hi, today is my one thousand fifty ninth day in Seattle. Uh, Forty and one thousand fifty ninth grain while praying for everyone's health and peace. That's very nice. I didn't hear a thing. That's uplifting. It's he. It's every day. He makes an origami, and then every day he prays for everyone in Seattle's health and peace. Wow. He's been doing it for 1,500 days or something. Wow. So I, mean, I can't wait to see his origami the day he gets swung on by a random. Yeah. One day he'll just have like a black eye and a bandage. I, I pray for everyone, but I was swung on. And it's like when you started praying, it's like five years ago. It's, yeah. it's like, you know, so then it's like Seattle's kind of gone down yeah it hasn't really been effective it hasn't really worked <laughs> sorry I, uh, I know this is uplifting gold but it's kind of similar where he does it every day similar to rohit no yeah. fizzy drinks for me today yeah, yeah yeah um all right let's go to the cat who has a crush this is stupid it's uplifting cat likes the cat on the screen you see he likes the cat on the he screen. likes it nice good that cat gets it yeah he gets it He's on his way to that. He'd he'd be freaked out by that twenty thousand dollar dog suit guy too, probably. Yeah, for sure. And then last clip: the Stanford University created glasses that help deaf people get subtitles in real time. In real time. I'll let you know when to go. Okay. Okay. Ready. 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 Recording. Yes. Cool. So hi, I'm Tom, and this is Transcribe Glass subtitles for the real world. So using our device, you can actually see captions for everything I say in your field of view in real time, while also getting a good sense of my lips, my environment, and everything else around me. That's Transcribe Glass, designed to help you fully understand the conversation. Thank you. That's cool. Good for them. Yeah, and then if you're like one of these brain-fried Netflix watchers who just likes having subtitles, Uh you can have that for your life too. And Smart. Your whole life can be like a Netflix. Smart. It's pretty good. Yeah. Not not for deaf people, just for Netflix brain fried people. That's who you want it on? The target? It's open to everybody. <laughs> okay. Fair. That's why I'm bullish. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the bullish <laughs> scenario is this is a thing that's going to improve the industry and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, what's the word that means like set a whole new tone. total addressable market? I yeah. And then the bears are like, this will kind of go a long way until it's ready. And then the Fleckus theory is. Brain dead Netflix watchers can use this too. That's the extent of his uh, his trading knowledge and nice. stocks picking. It's all vibes, and it's all like, is Bud Light gonna crater or go up? Yeah. So. Well, sometimes I'm right. We'll see. I'm excited to see what the earnings are like. Uh, yeah. Never financial advice. Another Fluckus Talks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Uh, FluckusTalks.com for the bonus content, extra stuff. And then on Fridays, we're gonna get back to shouting out our small businesses. So if you have any small businesses you want to shout out, email Zach, Z-A-C-H, at FleckusTalks.com. And then Zach will go through them, and we will pick one. All right. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one. Hi. Today is my 1,059th day in Seattle. Uh, 40 and 1,059th.